Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, June is known as Men's Health Month, and today we're talking about understanding the importance of health checks for men. Um, a time that is dedicated to raising awareness is June about the unique health challenges that men face. Men often encounter specific health issues that may go unnoticed or untreated due to various factors, including societal norms and reluctance to seek medical help. Mental health is a significant concern amongst men with conditions like depression, often undiagnosed or stigmatized, leading to delayed treatment and adverse outcomes. Today, we're addressing these challenges head on and exploring how preventive health measures, including screenings for depression and other conditions, can play a critical role in improving overall well being. Joining us as we discuss this importance of proactive health management and how we can break down barriers to ensure men reserve, receive the care that they deserve is Dr. Nisochi. She's a renowned NYC area-based physician, health expert, and media contributor. Good morning, Ma. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right. So we're talking about Men's Health Month, which is June. Just, you know, talk to us. What's the significance of this month and why it is important that men have to, you know, take, um, take serious care of themselves and even their mental health as well? So the significance of this month is that we are calling to action all men to be more proactive about taking care of their health needs. In general, men are more likely than women to ignore um, certain, uh, certain symptoms, certain health concerns. They're less likely to go to the doctor when they actually um, need to get evaluated. So this month, it's really a call to action to get to that evaluation with your medical doctor to determine if there is any cause for concern. We are really um, advocating for preventive health um, evaluations, these are comp comprehensive evaluations that can um, enable your doctor to determine if there are any um, health concerns from a mental health standpoint um, or from a physical health standpoint. Uh, the key is actually getting oneself to that appointment um, so that they can get the needed screenings. A uh, first screening that you did mention is depression screening. Meaning, um, you're in Nigeria, depression is often a taboo um, topic. Uh, those that do um, have depression, they are somewhat stigmatized. So we really need to remove the stigma um, from depression, having um, a mood disorder like depression, and really make it um, okay for one to um, express some of the uh, things that they are feeling when it comes to depression so they can get the um, adequate and appropriate treatment. Yeah, but what are some of the steps that you'll be taking to make sure that the men are on this page? Because if you say they drag their feet when it comes to seeking uh, at medical attention, uh, then it means that something really, really has to be done to make them uh, change, have a change of heart. So what are some of the steps you're going to be taking or that need to be taken in this month to make sure that the men have a change of heart? So at this point, it's really um, about awareness. So having discussions like this are an important uh, critical factor. Um, letting every man know in this month of June what the importance of some of these screening metrics that I'm going to discuss are. Um, if you're aware of some of the uh, consequences of not getting these evaluations on not having these screenings it may be the impetus that would allow one to move forward with scheduling that appointment mm -hmm. okay so i know that there's a thing where they say men don't cry um yes men do not show emotions um how is it important for men to understand that it's okay to cry it's okay to show your emotions it's okay to be vulnerable um you know in our society and it's not just for women as a human being, you should be able to express yourself, express what you feel, and so even be able to go maybe see a therapist if, it's important, if that's what you need. How important is this for men to get it and move away from the ego of saying, I'm a man and I need to take it up? Mm -hmm. So that's extremely um, important. There are a lot of individuals out there struggling in silence struggling with some of the symptoms that they are feeling, bottling all of these feelings up. 
And this, when it's um, not um, addressed, can cause major issues um, as it relates to mental health. Um, so for instance, there can be individuals out there outwardly, you may never understand or um, realize what they're dealing with um, on the surface, but they're really struggling. So the key is to be able to express oneself and uh, discuss some of the thoughts that are um, that are bothering one or uh, leading one to have um, thoughts of uh, depressive symptoms so that they can get the adequate um, treatment. So for instance, um, when we're talking about um, depressive uh, disorder, major depressive disorder, um, it's usually something that is diagnosed if one is feeling um, at least five of the following symptoms um, repeatedly for at least a two week period. So these are major symptoms for everyone to uh, be aware of. Um, one would be having um, sleep disturbances, having issues with your uh, sleep, having decreased interest or pleasure in things that used to um, bring one uh, joy or pl pleasure, having an energy loss, a lack of energy for no known reason, feeling symptoms of guilt or feeling uh, symptoms of worthlessness, um, feeling um, that you're having issues with uh, concentration. You might notice that your concentration um, is off. Changes in appetite, that's a big one as well. But the major one really is having thoughts of um, self-harm or thoughts of harming others. Whenever there is any issue with suicidal ideation, that's a major, major red flag. So if this is something, any of these symptoms that one may be experiencing or exhibiting, it really is important to get some help. Yeah, so now that we know that some of the symptoms uh, that you've enumerated, so what are the measures to be taken to guard against that? In terms of prevention or even when you get to that point, what do you need to do? Correct. So in terms of um, prevention, that's why I reiterate the need for preventive health evaluations. So when I see a patient that comes into um, my clinic, we're not only um, screening for um, chronic medical problems and uh, um, physical ailments, we're also screening for depression. With every evaluation, one really should be screened for depression. It's a simple questionnaire that every patient can fill out during their visit. And if your uh, physician sees that you're scoring high on this uh, screening metric, then it can be addressed in real time. So the screening metric that I'm referring to is something called a PHQ-9, a patient health questionnaire. Um, and this is a tool that can be used a simple screening questionnaire that can be used to determine if there is a cause for concern. The higher that one scores, um, the, the increased severity of the um, possible issue at hand. So if these screenings are done routinely during your check-in with your doctor, you can potentially get the help that is needed from a mental health uh, point of view. Not going to the doctor will not enable you to get the actual evaluation you need, whether it's for mental health or for any other physical problem. Yeah, the orientation of what would I say about going to seek help in a medical facility, not just for men, for everybody, seems to be different from uh, what we have elsewhere. And I'm, I'm thinking of who should be at the vanguard when we are trying to change this kind of orientation to get people to seek help? Because it's not just the men, the women, the children, everybody, nobody wants to go to the hospital. It seems you go to the hospital when you are about to die and uh, you, know, you have explored all avenues and you can't get it. So I don't know how we can change this orientation in our people. Mm -hmm. should so I think the... Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm the last part of what you stated. No, I just said, who should lead this fight, as it were, or this evangelism, call it whatever you want? Mm -hmm. So I do believe it's a multifactorial um, approach, but at the core of it all, the healthcare infrastructure here in Nigeria really does need to change to actually advocate for preventive health. 
there's something key that you just mentioned. You stated that most people um, don't go to the hospital until it's too late. Um, that should not be the case. There really should be this focus, this emphasis on prevention. If we can pinpoint and target health concerns before they progress into something um, acute and serious that could potentially lead to death, then that would be the ideal situation to treat disease, to diagnose disease before it gets out of hand. So things just need to be restructured when it comes to health care, and there needs to be that emphasis really on preventive health measures. Everyone really should have a preventive health wellness evaluation at least once a year so that your doctor and you yourself can understand if there are any health concerns that really need to be um, addressed. Mm. So what is the role of the government in all of this? How can the government, you know, start to help people? Because I, I know that our health sector is not one of the best, but what are things or measures that we can put in place to ensure that we're galvanizing people, making them, you know, check themselves to, to just have that better mental space? Mm -hmm. So first, there needs to be more funding that goes into healthcare, mm -hmm. um, whereby there is um, access to healthcare. There are major issues when it comes to even the access piece of things. So let's say there is one that is inclined to um, go get checked out because they're noticing certain symptoms. If they don't even have the simple, basic, fundamental, um, fundamental access um, to these healthcare services, then what, what are they left with? What are they going to do next? So there really needs to be a drive to have more funding in the healthcare sector um, so um, all Nigerians can have access to quality healthcare um, and then they can actually have these preventive services in play. It should not be when it's only a medical emergency one is seeking out um, an evaluation. We should have routine services for all Nigerians um, at all times. I love that. Routine services for all Nigerians. I think um, at the end of the day, it is important that men check themselves and not just men, everybody. everybody yeah. Yes. Everyone should be able to have this preventive um, health checks to be sure that you're OK in your body, you're OK in your mind, because when you have a sound mind, your body can, you know, flourish, your body can be well. And if you're not well up there, then you cannot really yeah, be well yeah. on the outside yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it is, it is important. And I hope that the government start to play this vital role that they need to to ensure that everyone is okay well we want to say thank you for coming thank you so much you. it was lovely having this conversation with you dr nisochi thank you for having me thank you all right we've been speaking with dr nisochi okeke ibokwe she's a medical expert and ceo dr nisochi lcc all right this is where we have to wrap it up on today's breakfast show. It was a lovely having a breakfast show with you this week. We'll see you again on Monday. My name is Rome Paulson. Lovely day. Lovely day. Uh, lovely <laughs> day. Well, <laughs> well, it's Friday. I can do anything. I can say anything. I'm, I'm <laughs> going to turn up on my bed, mm. you know. Uh, um, but whatever you can do to unwind, do it because uh, all work and no play, you know, just makes you a sick and seek our person. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's how it sits. Uh, thank you. My name is Nyamgul. I'll you. See you on Monday. See you on Monday. Have an amazing weekend.